Hey all, it's Vintage Vinny, and welcome to part two of Thrifting in Philly. Before we get started, I would like to say thank you and welcome to all of my new subscribers. I appreciate you stopping by, checking out my channel, and watching my videos. I hope you all are enjoying what you see, and trust me, there's no shortage of me stopping thrifting because I love it so much and I've been doing it since I was really little. If you all would like to see part one, it is linked right here. And make sure you check me out on Instagram as well because I am sharing a lot of photos of some of the people I got to meet and it was super exciting and I am still missing everybody and it is about a week later. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. First thing I picked up was this really nice decanter. Not exactly sure who made it. It was $10, a little bit up there in price, but I definitely think it was worth it because it is uranium glass and it just glows beautifully under the black light. I think the stopper is even uranium, so I think that that's an original piece to it, which is great because I know I'll probably get more money for it. Be on the lookout for that at a future live sale. Then in one of the shops, I found this set and it's the same place where Dee found the pumpkin spice tin with the jack-o'-lantern on it. And it's, I think these are made by Colorcraft, if I'm not mistaken. Amy, if you're watching this, correct me if I'm wrong. But I've never seen the creamer and sugar before. So I went ahead and grabbed those, and Tammy does collect these. I didn't know it at the time until I showed them to her. Because I'd never seen them. I've only ever seen the pitchers, and I've only ever seen the roly-polies, and I've seen the tumblers. I've never seen a creamer and a sugar set. And I think those were, what were they? I wouldn't have paid 16 bucks for them. Um, so they were half off. I think if, at this shop, if it was over a month old, the prices were 50%. So I paid eight for that set. Because I'd never seen it before, I felt that $7.99 or $4 a piece was a very good deal. So we were in one of the next shops and it had mainly furniture with like little tchotchkes here or there. And we all spotted these uh, jars here bunch of the shakers, there was this one that said rice on it. I cannot remember for the life of me who made them. Scott is much better at that than I am. Although I have gained some knowledge. Uh, for the life of me, I just cannot remember what he said they were. But anyway, we all scooped them up. Because they are cool. They would look great for springtime. Or even for Halloween. I mean, heck, this green is good for both times of the year. So I went ahead and got those. I think it was actually our first night there, like our first full day, I should say, sorry, so probably Friday. We went to Scott's apartment, which is absolutely fantastic, by the way. And we just hung out and, you know, we spent pretty much the whole day thrifting and, you know, shops were closing and such. So we decided to go check out his apartment because we'd seen it in his videos and I'm sure you all have seen him too. And it's a really nice little apartment in Philly. It really is. So we were hanging out and just chilling, talking, you know, doing what friends do when they're hanging out. And Scott says, oh, I've got some stuff for you all. And of course, we weren't expecting that at all. So again, Scott, thank you. You know how much I love pinup. And when I saw these, I was blown away because I literally have been on the hunt for these. And... When I do find them, people want an arm and a leg for them. If you don't know what they are, these are called peekaboo glasses. They're made by Federal. They're marked on the bottom with the F in the shield. Right there. And what you do is you fill these up with water or any liquid. And once the liquid hits the glass, the clothes become like virtually non-existent and they disappear and then the girl looks like that <laughs> same with this one here very risque for the time period they're just fun novelty pieces and scott again i cannot thank you enough i absolutely love 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 these and he also gave me a couple of other things which i really like too he found me a 
melted plastic popcorn art jack-o'-lantern. And he knows that I love these, so whenever I find them, I do buy them. So that was another fun surprise. He also found me three photographs of a woman dressed in different clothing. I absolutely love her look. She, she to me, looks like Lauren Bacall or Betty Joan Persky. Doesn't she? Just a little bit. Maybe it's the face and the hair. So these are absolutely fantastic, and I will be adding them to my ephemera book. So, Scott, again, thank you very much. It was so thoughtful, and just, you didn't have to do that. It was, yeah, I absolutely love these. And again, thank you, 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 thank you. I will treasure this stuff for freaking ever. So, the last group of items we're going to be looking at came from Thunderbird Salvage, a place that I really, really wanted to go take a look at. I remember Crazy Lamp Lady actually did a video of them a long time ago, like when she made a trip out to Philly. I think it may have been pre-COVID. And I was fascinated by the place, and I wanted to go see it for myself, and Scott took us there. So that was really exciting. The only thing about Thunderbird is that none of the stuff is priced. Well, they had some things priced, but a lot of like the stuff on the shelves and things like that did not have prices, so you had to bring it up to them and they would price it, you know, however they wanted to, or however much they wanted to charge you. And I did find a great deal of stuff. I spent almost a hundred bucks and most of it is pinup. And everyone was really curious as to what kind of stuff that I found, like pinup wise. So after we left and we went to Scott's apartment, I showed it to everyone and they said, yeah, you definitely got a really good deal on this stuff. So let me go ahead and show it to you all. So first thing that I found was this um, snowman candy container, probably made by Rosen Brothers. It's a little dirty and there's some glue residue right there, but he's in good shape despite the fact that his pipe's missing. This is probably the only thing that I bought there to resell. It's probably not going to be too much, maybe like six to eight bucks. It's a happy birthday angel or just a happy birthday girl. It's made by EF Japan and she's in good shape. No broken pieces on her. I got myself a pinup match book. What would Vinny say? It says foot loose, and it looks like she's wearing some stockings and her skirt has ridden up a little bit on her. Now this, I'm not sure how well it's gonna show. It's a negative of a lady. And let me see if I can pull it out of here. It's probably not gonna show all that well, but yeah. I don't think she's completely nude, she's just topless. I think the girl who rung me up um, said that she found that in a drawer or something. I think I may have expressed a little too much interest in the pinups. That's why some of her prices were kind of like a little high. But once I put it all together and I saw what I got, I definitely had a, got a good deal on everything. So this was really interesting. Again, it is nude, so I apologize. But this is a pocket mirror. Let me pull it out of here so you guys can see it a little bit better. Because it's really interesting. And it, I think it's probably from the 20s. Teens or 20s, probably. She's topless and she's posing. And it is just very, very fascinating. I've never seen that before. So I had to go ahead and pick that up. Now, I did do some research on these. I got a bunch of Betty Page photographs. And... So whilst digging through this big, like, organizer thing full of ephemera, I come across these Betty Page photos. Or maybe they were in the case with the mirror. You know what? I think these were in the case with the mirror, so I apologize. That's not where these were. I paid $4 a piece for them, and they're going to be for me. Now, I was not even sure if these were originals, but it's got this right here, like the photo code or something like that. And I did look these up on eBay to see if they were anything. And somebody, I think, had some of these. And they had, I think one of the descriptions for one of the listings said that these were purchased by like an Irving Claw studio or something. 
and they were printed from a negative, so they're not reprints, but they're, if that makes sense, I think that's what it was. If I can find the listing, I'll go ahead and I'll link it down below for you guys. But I know that Betty Page is super popular, and I decided to go ahead and take a shot in the dark, and I think I got them even cheaper because of everything that I bought. So here's the first picture of her, and there are no nudes. We got this one here. Again, it's got the code. Here's another one of her posing. I mean, just look how clear the picture is, too. I mean, if these were reprints, I wouldn't think they would be as high quality. So I think what they said in the listing, if I'm not mistaken, was they were purchased by something Irving Claw Studio, and they were stored for over 30 years. So they're possibly older photos, but they were, maybe they just produced many of them. But I'm, like I said, I'm not an expert, so I can't say for sure. But I am glad that I did take a shot in the dark on them because you don't ever find this kind of stuff as cheap as I did. Now this one is a little bit risque in the sense because it's kind of like bondage, like that fetish of tying people up, which is a little bit on the racy side, even for then. And it says Betty Page 4x5 B&W photo tied up. So it's a little bit on the masochistic side, I guess you could say, but it came with a lot and I just didn't want to leave it behind. So those were really interesting. So here's one of the first pieces of pinup, like the pinup calendar pieces that I got. This is a Jay Urbit image and it looks like it's of a woman posing for an artist. I absolutely love her. And she comes in this really nice ornate frame so I thought that that was definitely a cool piece. Okay, so what we have are two P George Petty pinup calendars, both of the same year, 1955. So I have a complete calendar right here, and then I have ones that were completely taking, are taken off of the binding. So that'll make it easier to share each page with you all. So let's go ahead and dive right in, shall we? So we are looking at January right here. There is not a second one, so those are just loose pages, but you know I don't mind that. So here is February. And then we've got March. Oops, she's showing a little bit of booty. And we've got April, again, showing a lot of booty. So this is May. This girl's not revealing too much. You can see a little bit of a side boob. Uh, we've got June. Oh, I guess maybe it wasn't a complete calendar or I just put them in the wrong order. So we've got July. So that looks like Peter Pan to me. We've got August. Here's September. Looks like a see-through bodysuit. Oops. And here's October, a Native American, which I think is really interesting. I would think that that would be the November pinup girl. Here is November. That looks like that should be for Halloween, doesn't it? Oops. And here is December. She's holding up a candlestick, and again, you're seeing a lot more booty. So that's the 1955 calendar. So here's another semi-complete calendar. It is missing pages, so it is not totally perfect, but again, it was definitely worth it. So this is February. Very dainty girl. She's definitely looking flexible. More flexible than I think I'll ever be in my lifetime. Here's another girl. That's March. I think this is this is a Vargas calendar, or part of a Vargas calendar. 
maybe 1947, 1948, or 1949, not exactly sure, because it doesn't say. Now, I did have two of these, but I did give one to my girl, Dee, because she is a July girl, or July baby, and she really liked it, so I had two of them, and I let her take the one. So she's going to frame this and put it up, I think, for 4th of July. Which I think is great because she's dressed for that period. She looks like Martha Washington. And then we have an August girl. This one would look fantastic framed and put in your bathroom. Or in your summer vignettes. Because she looks like she's about to dive into a pool because of a hot summer day. I think that's the... Nope, there's another one. And then we've got December. And she is just as elegant and beautiful as a pinup girl should be. Looks like the hair and the flower are covering up her chest. So that's that calendar. So now we are looking at the pages from a 1948 Petty calendar. And again, it is not complete, but I will take it for what it is. So we've got this cute, dainty girl here, dressed in purple. We have a girl dressed in green for St. Patrick's Day. Again, a great image to frame and put up for that time of year. This almost looks like the same girl, but she's different from February. This is June. I love this girl. She almost looks like a bellhop. Isn't she fantastic? And it looks like she is trying to engage in some pillow talk before pillow talk was even a movie. This is about 11 years before that Rock Hudson Doris Day movie came out. This is September. It looks like she's out shooting those clay discs. What do they call that? My mind's drawing a blank right now, but you get what I mean. I love, love, love this girl for October. Look at her. Now this girl for November looks like she's getting ready to head down south and ride a horse. In December, again, looks like she's having too much fun on the phone, maybe seducing the man on the other line. So that's it for the 1948 Petty Calendar. This came from a 1948 Vargas Calendar, if I'm not mistaken. And I think it does because I have this one. And can you imagine framing this and putting it in like a shabby chic room because of the way she's dressed, like the pink and, you know, she's got the 40s hair, kind of like Betty Grable in some of her early movies from the 40s. You can do so many things with these pieces if they're not complete. The only thing I recommend is if you do get one at an auction, don't try to list a page for like $15 because you're not going to get it. I've bought them at antique stores before, like just a single page, and it was like four bucks. And it's perfect because you can frame it and use it as art. It doesn't have to be a complete calendar. And this is one of the perfect examples of that. Can you imagine, like I said, putting that in a, a shabby chic room because she's dressed in like, you know, with the pink and everything. I think she would look fantastic with that. So this one only has a few pages in it, but I still grabbed it anyway. And I believe I grabbed every single piece of pinup that I could find in this little organizer thing. And I think I might have this one too. It's from 1947. Page is loose here. Here's April. And my grandmother was born on the 18th of that year. So she was born on a Friday. We got this girl here for September. She's smoking a cigarette, and she looks like she's sitting on a diving board. And then we've got December. So very, very cool. I believe that this came from a magazine and not a calendar. Or maybe it did come from a calendar, I don't know. Um, and this one is a Christmas pinup because it says, 
All bright-eyed and sincere, she says the Christmas spirit should be felt throughout the year. She means it come ill-fought to get a shiny token every week or month or so. Okay, so that's different. And then this girl on the other side, it says, I never haul a suitcase, push a door, or change a tire. Instead, I bat my eyes in thanks and blushingly admire. These are jobs I could perform if that were my desire. Occupational therapy's a thing all men require. Now that is naughty right there. Even for nowadays. I still thought that was really cool and I had to have that. So I think this piece came out of a book, Shades of a New Season, two-tone suit trimmed with ruching to flare the skirt and jacket. And these are actually samples of that fabric that you can actually feel. So this probably came out of a fashion book or something. Definitely for fall, just look at the graphics of her. Wouldn't she be great framed also and put out for display? And this is by Fashion Frooks. So that was definitely interesting. And this is the last thing I'd like to share with you all, and as soon as I saw it, I knew I had to have it. It's Sampo's Manufacturers of Quality Tackle, and it looks like it was a cardboard store display. But look at that mermaid. Isn't she just fantastic? Now, there was a price sticker of $25 on it, and I was a little hesitant to pay that, but like I said, once it all... You know, once we did the total for everything, it made it a lot cheaper. So I knew I had to have that. I cannot wait to frame that. That is such a cool piece to add to my coastal-themed room. I'll get another close-up of the mermaid for you guys. So that is everything that I would like to share with you all for part two. As always, you can let me know down in the comments section, what was your favorite item I shared in this video? So that's all I have for you today. Be sure and give this video a big thumbs up, leave a comment below, subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure and click the bell next to the subscribe button if you'd like to get notified when new videos are uploaded. Be sure and check me out on Instagram, the link to it is down below as well, where you will see pictures of items to come in future haul videos. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you all soon. Bye guys!